Hi, everybody, and welcome to this new session of Coffee Break with Edify. My name is Frederick Ravelli, and today we're going to talk about assisted analysis for butt well inspection uh, with a new capture 4.0. So uh, Capture was released about a month ago, and just a quick overview of Capture before uh, entering the topic today. Uh, we developed a bunch of new features, uh, one of them, of course, being the assisted analysis. Uh, a lot of uh, new things as well uh, for TFM with the plane wave imaging and new modes, uh, the ability to control the Panther with uh, Capture, and a lot of features requested by customers. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we have introduced new modes, uh, the 5L, the 5T, and the LLT. And all these modes and all the other indirect modes, like the 3T, the 4T, and so on, are now compatible with plane wave imaging. So now you can use all these advanced modes with the fastest TFM on the market with a plane wave imaging, and you can look at the effects like in many ways. Uh, another big thing is the ability to control the Panther with capture. Of course, you can still use the software acquire for very complex uh, inspections for uh, in-service as well. But now you also have the option to use the easy to use interface uh, known on the Gecko and the Mantis uh, with the Panther and benefit from all uh, the power of the Panther, meaning that since uh, the graphic card of your PC is doing the TFM calculation, you have way more power. So you can calculate TFM with uh, way more pixels, uh, 1 million per group, and still have a really good scanning speed. Uh, the Panther being a 128 element unit, you can also use full apertures, like with 128 elements, like if you have an 11 by 11 matrix, uh, or for TFM, if you want to use a full 128 elements, uh, you can do it uh, now on, on capture with the Panther. And today we're going to talk about the assisted analysis. Uh, so the goal of that feature uh, is to try to extract uh, indication automatically from a phase during inspection and provide as much information as possible uh, to the table of indication. Really, the goal here is to improve the productivity of the analysis. It's not to replace the operator because we know you guys have a lot of experience on the field. We just want to help you, uh, not replace you. And this is available on PC and also on the unit. So if you have a Gecko or Mantis, you can actually use that feature directly on the field. So let's look at the type of configuration that we can deal with. Uh, the setup must include a minimum of two groups. As we do um, well inspection, we need to have inspection from both sides. Uh, this is required by standards. And the feature, feature is based on standards. So you need at least one probe on each side of the weld. Uh, of course, you need to scan your well, so the one axis uh, inspection. Raster scan is not uh, handled yet, but uh, we will in the future. And you need a time corrected gain uh, for each group that you are using because the feature is based on amplitude and length of the defects. So you need to have a TCG to uh, set like a reference level. Again, uh, this is up to the operator at the end to accept or refuse uh, the results of the analysis feature because uh, we're not here to replace you. Uh, just to help you. So the type of specimen that we can handle today with a feature is plate and pipes uh, for circumferential wells. Uh, we can deal with V and X well prep. And uh, you can, of, of course, include the heat affected zone. Not mandatory, but I think we recommend it uh, to define your scan plan. Uh, so as I mentioned, we need two uh, identical linear uh, phase rate probes on each side. So position upstream and downstream at 90 and 270 degrees with respect to the axis of uh, the weld. Uh, the feature supports linear scanning, uh, sector scanning, compound scanning, with or without uh, focusing. You can have multiple groups of probe, so you can do a sector scan and a linear scan from, uh, with the same probe. And of course, you can uh, use Toft and any other groups, such as you know, coupling check. Uh, they are not being used by the assisted analysis, but they don't bother it uh, either. So let's look at a couple of examples of configurations that can be handled, and then I will go into a demonstration. So this type of configuration, uh, let's say you have four 32 element probes at five meg with different index offsets. So you have two probes like this close to the weld, and you have two probes a little bit farther. Uh, we are gonna do uh, two of the probes are gonna do a sector scan. Uh, two other probes are gonna do Campan scan. Uh, and of course, we're gonna displace the probe along the axis of the weld. So that's uh, a configuration that can be handled by uh, the analysis, assisted analysis feature. Another example, uh, here we have two 64 element array probes. 
uh, there is an offset along the axis scan, so you can actually uh, deal with axis um, uh, scan offset. Uh, sorry, and each of the probes is going to do a sectoral scan and electronic scan at the same time. So uh, the module knows how to handle all these four groups and provide information about indications. Of course, everything is based on the good practice. Uh, by good practice, I mean uh, when you do a sectoral scan or compound scan or linear scan, you're going to try to be normal to the bevel on the second leg. Uh, because if you look at standards, uh, they tell you that you know you have to be normal plus or minus six degree according to ISO standards. And this is where the scan plan of capture is interesting because we actually display here uh, the angle between the refracted angles and the bevel. And you can actually see there is also a color coded. Uh, so if it's six degrees or less, it's green. So we can see here that this is a perfect position for the probe because we are normal to the bevel and we are um, close to these six degrees uh, across the second leg. On the first leg, we try to optimize corner echoes for the wood crack or toe cracks. And of course, the range that we are you know, selecting uh, must cover fully the weld and heat affected zone. Uh, so you have to select your range to cover everything. At the end of the day, I mean, this is just like good practice. Uh, the assisted analysis results are going to be as good as the acquisition. So let's look at a demo. And the first example, I'm going to use a V-weld, uh, which is about 25 millimeter, has a couple of defects, I like a toe crack, uh, but well, the delamination, I'm not going to look at it. Uh, lack of uh, sidewall fusion, uh, some porosities, and some uh, incomplete wood penetration. So let's switch to it. Uh, so you see here uh, the configuration. I have a sector scan on one side with TCG. I have a sector scan on the other side with the TCG. Uh, the configuration is actually using two 32 element probe uh, that was done with the Mantis. Uh, so the Mantis is a 1664 element. So we use compound scan with an aperture of 16. Uh, on each side and to try to be normal to the bevel on the second leg. So typical configuration for uh, weld inspection. We can see a couple of uh, defects here and there. You can see like probably that's a lack of cellular fusion here. You can see uh, some kind of defect uh, you know, in the penetration and so on. So here this configuration is compatible with ESCC analysis. And because it is compatible, here at the bottom of the screen, you have that new feature. I'm just going to click on it and you open the assisted analysis uh, module. Uh, it is pretty basic. We try to keep it simple. It has three tabs, a detection one, a filtering one, and characterization. So the detection one is going to be uh, the one used to uh, uh, fill the table of indication. There is a recording level, uh, which is uh, coming from the standard, from ISO standard, uh, which is based at minus 10 dB uh, with respect to the TCG. Uh, if I look, uh, this is coming from that figure from ISO 19285, uh, which is level for technique one for thickness between 15 and 100 millimeters. The recording level, uh, which is number three here, is minus 10 dB, and the evalu evaluation level is minus 14 dB. That means we are going to look at minus 14 dB with respect to the TCG. Uh, of course, you can change them based on your standard or your application, uh, and you can save them. So, But here, I'm going to follow uh, the ISO standard. So this uh, tab is going to detect automatically all the indications that are 10 dB uh, above, uh, minus 10 dB above uh, the reference uh, level. So the filtering uh, essentially uh, is automatically filled. Uh, it's going to be the area where we're going to look for defects. Uh, and this is based on ISO standard 13588. And you also have that standard for thin weld. So essentially it tells that you have we have to look for defects uh, inside the weld uh, with the width, which is coming from the standard, so 10 millimeters here. And we also include uh, axial tolerance. Because when we do a scan, sometimes our scanner is kind of moving along the weld a little bit. So we have to take into account this uh, tolerance in, when we are looking for defects. Uh, this is also coming from the standard, uh, five millimeter for the ISO 13588 and two millimeters for thin weld. And finally, the minimal length is the minimum length of the defect you're gonna look at. Uh, so here I put 4.5 millimeter. I can put something smaller, but of course I will obtain more defects or you can put something bigger and you might miss some uh, smaller defects. So it's again, based on your standard. And at the end, after detecting all the defects, 
the module is going to try to classify them. So by, by that, I mean, like, it's going to try to tell you it's a crack in the middle well, it's a toe crack, and so on. Uh, and when it's not able to tell you, it's still going to show you an indication, but it's going to be up to you to tell you what it is. And I can also include indication from the geometries. So I can see all the echoes that are detected, and the system knows automatically those are uh, geometry echoes. But for now, I'm not going to do that. And I'm just going to proceed. When you are done with it, I uh, just click on Proceed. And right now, the system is detecting all the defects um, in both C scans. Try to characterize it. And it's going to, here we go. So you see, it was actually pretty fast. Uh, this is a 300 millimeter long uh, weld. So you can kind of imagine uh, how long it would be based on your weld. So here I have a couple of results. Uh, you can see like automatically this indication was detected and classified as a lack of sidewall fusion. Uh, it's actually you know, pretty good. Uh, so here, the, what the software is doing is detecting this echo. Uh, it's looking at the angle. Uh, it is close to the chamfer angle. Uh, so uh, due to the position, the orientation, and the amplitude, this is classified as a lack of sidewall fusion. So I'm going to go into assessment. So this part at the bottom, we kind of change it in uh, Capture 4.0 to make it a little bit uh, more convenient and easier for people to switch from one indication to the other one. So here, I'm actually satisfied with the results. So I'm just going to switch to the next one. Uh, so the next one here is uh, detected as a crack at the weld junction. Um, you know, it could be also a toe crack. We actually know this is a toe crack. Uh, but the system believes this is a crack at the well junction. So it's looking on both sides, looking at the amplitude, looking at the position, and trying to come up with a classification. Uh, we can see here that there is another indication very close, uh, number four. This is actually part of the same indication, but the defect as it propagates is probably not uh, offering like you know perfect amplitude, but we know they are part of the same indication. So I can go directly into the table, select the two indications, and merge them. And now I have one indication, and I can say this is a defect, and I can change the name. And let's say it's a door crack. We are. Uh, but the color is a little bit different. It's not white like this one because uh, the software uh, tells you that you have modified it. I can, can continue up. Here we go. We have a big indication. Uh, this is a potential defect. The system was not able to tell you what kind of indication it was. Uh, so it is up to you to decide what it is. It's definitely a defect because we have a strong echo on both sides. Uh, this is coming from the root. Uh, and I'm going to say it's a lack of penetration. There we go. I can continue here. Uh, here, there is a potential defect. So I'm going to zoom a little bit on it. So I have an echo at the root. If I look on the other side, because it is above the 10 dB, uh, the 10 dB uh, recording, minus 10 dB, I don't really have anything on the other side. Uh, so this is probably just like a root echo from the geometry. And you know what? I'm just going to delete it. And finally, there is another echo from the other side. Uh, this is kind of a, an echo coming from the same defect. I'm just going to delete it as well. Uh, so now I have my table of indication with my three indications. Again, that uh, can be fully customized. So here I have scan start, length. You can fully customize all the indication you have here uh, with all the comments and so on. So this was the first example on the VWell 25 millimeter. And of course, I mean, I forgot to mention, but uh, then you can go into the report uh, and you can import, exp export into the uh, report all the information. I can see here that I did my wedge delay calibration, that I did my sensitivity calibration. This is a new feature in Capture 4.0. You can actually export now uh, the sensitivity calibration of all your elements, your element check. And if I look at the, at the bottom here, I have uh, my three indications with all the information. All right. So let's look at another example. Boiler tube. Okay, so thin weld here. Uh, if we look, so I ha we have a boiler tube with uh, five millimeter weld thickness. Uh, I think it's uh, one inch or two inches in diameter. I forgot what it is. Uh, it's somewhere. And we have two defects: uh, lack of side weld fusion and a toe crack. So here I did uh, two sectoral scan. 
uh, you have here the, the configuration, same thing here. You can see your low profile probes uh, that we use with a low profile scanner. Uh, and we see uh, the two defects pretty uh, clearly here. Uh, there is lack of fusion here, and there is another defect right here. So I did my TCG. We can see here the TCG on both sides. I can switch. And I, I'm going to open uh, my ICT analysis. Uh, based on the thickness, it determines that it's going to use that ISO standard. So the width is automatically adjusted to 6 millimeter, and the axial tolerance is 2 millimeters. Of course, if you want to edit it, you can edit the axial tolerance this way. Uh, and I'm going to proceed again. All right, so I have my lack of cell wall fusion here uh, with automatic sizing at minus 14 dB. Uh, I'm going to switch to the other one. Uh, here I have a crack at the well junction again. Uh, the reason why, uh, because if you look here at the two echoes, uh, actually, oops, I have a very strong tip diffraction and a very small corner echo. So uh, the crack is actually not purely vertical, it's kind of propagating along. Uh, the bevel, kind of the same orientation as the bevel. So the assisted analysis feature uh, is detecting that this is a crack at the well junction. Uh, I can edit it, uh, but here this is fine. Uh, and it was automatically sized at minus 14 dB. Uh, now, if we go on the other side, this is exactly the same defect uh, but seen on the other side. So I don't need to put that into the report. Uh, this side is actually stronger here in amplitude. So I'm just going to remove that. Uh, of course, I forgot to do that previously, but I can take some screenshots and add them to the report. Uh, there you go. I'm going to add that to the report. And again, I can then just uh, remove the TCG, otherwise it's going to be a pretty long. So we can see our low profile probes, our low profile scanner, and the indications with a screenshot that I can send into my report, either as a PDF or Excel. So if you want to modify after in Excel, that's something yeah, you can do. All right, last example, uh, I'm going to show you uh, X well prep. Uh, here we go. So if we look here, uh, this is uh, X well prep with a sidewall uh, crack here. Uh, sorry, right here, a center line a crack, a slag, a toe crack, and the side wheel hole, but it's uh, located somewhere else. Pretty old sample, as you can see on the, on the paper. <laughs> All right, so I have uh, my X well right here. Um, you can look at my scan plan here. Uh, two 32 element pros were used. You can see that I was normal right here on the first leg to uh, the bevel at the bottom. Same thing with the other probe. Uh, here could have been interesting to use uh, longer probes or another set of probes to uh, as well be normal uh, right here for um, lack of sidewall fusion. Uh, did my uh, TCG on both sides. I can see the TCG. I have uh, one group on each side, so I have access to my assisted analysis feature. Uh, it is 25 millimeters, automatically um, the width is adjusted, axial tolerance as well, uh, and we can just proceed. Here we are. So, bunch of indications here. Uh, first one, incomplete penetration. I win because it's detected right here in between uh, the two bevels, uh, to the two preparations, so we know it's like a center line crack, but here the system doesn't really know the difference. Uh, but you know, I can change it if I want. I can edit uh, to something else, or I can keep keep incomplete penetration. I notice that I have another indication for the same position. So this is on uh, the second leg. So I know this is the same defect. So I'm just going to remove it. Uh, no need to report the defect twice. Uh, so here I have a defect. I see an indication on both sides. Uh, this is uh, an echo coming from uh, uh, the top of the well. So the, uh, this is 
our talk rack. It is pretty weak though, uh, but still I'm gonna call it uh, edit it. It is pretty weak, but it's still above the minus 10 dB. So defect three is the same, so no need to repeat here. Uh, here I have a strong echo along the route. Uh, I know this is a defect, so I'm just gonna so wood crack. Yeah. Here I have a defect in the volume. Uh, I can see it on both sides. So this is a volumetric defect. So it could be uh, a slag. Uh, doesn't look like a porosities because I only have one echo. It could be, because uh, I have two echoes here. So it could be like a, a center line crack. So I'm still gonna call it, I'm not gonna say what it is for now because I'm not sure what it is. And uh, here I have another defect, potential defect right here. I can look on the other side. I uh, don't see any echo from the other side at all. Uh, so this is probably a geometry echo here. Uh, so I'm just gonna, just gonna remove it. And same thing here, if I want to take some, um, can go back here. If I want to take some, sorry. Can take some screenshots, something as before. I mean, you understand the picture and I can go into my reports. Same thing as uh, before and same thing here and see the scanner being used. So at the end, you, you can have your report. So you see here again, the goal was not really to replace the operator, is to come up with a table of indication really quickly uh, based on standard, based on amplitude and length. Uh, it is still up to the operator to determine and accept or not the results of, uh, of the SCC analysis because you guys have a lot of experience on the field. You are used to see defects. Um, so we, we want to help you and we want to get some feedback from you uh, so we can improve uh, our algorithms and make it uh, a lot simpler. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that coffee break. Uh, now I'm ready for, uh, for some uh, questions. Uh, and I think like uh, Jean-Philippe, you are gonna display my uh, email address. Uh, can I use the feature with other standards? Uh, yes, of course. So here we have put uh, some ISO standards because we are familiar with it, uh, but uh, you can adjust uh, you know, the recording level, the evaluation level to the level you want. Uh, based on ASME standards, based on any other standards. Uh, same thing with the axial tolerance, uh, and you can save it, and then you can recall uh, that standard later. So yes, you can. Um, so, uh, Jonathan, good question. So at the moment, so this is available with Pro, and this is available on uh, the, the units. So you can have it on the Gecko and the Mantis, and you have it on Capture Pro, not on Companion. Um, because this is an advanced analysis feature. Uh, so no, unfortunately, you cannot analyze one-sided inspection because uh, we need we are the system is looking at information from both sides. Uh, so when you try to classify indications, uh, it's look, really looking at the at the information on both sides uh, to try to come up with a classification. Uh, and also, uh, when you look at well inspection, standards are recommending uh, to do a two-side inspection. But in the future, we can try to uh, you know, come up with uh, more uh, features for that uh, module. And we are really uh, want to put uh, the module out there and to have feedback from you guys and try to come up and, again, improve our feature. Um, so that's, uh, so what happens if the probes are not positioned correctly? So, so here, uh, the, the feature is really basic, uh, is very based on uh, the information you are putting into the system. So it's really based on the thickness, on the chamfer angle, on the offset of your probes to try to come up with classification. So if, if the probes are not at the right offset position, uh, well, it's gonna come up with the wrong uh, assessment of the defect. It's still gonna tell you do you have the defect, it's still gonna, because it's based on amplitude. So you are still gonna have uh, the information here, but it's probably going to be wrong in terms of the classification. The lack of fusion, for example, if it's really offset, it's going to tell you like you have a crack. So it's up to you to kind of adjust the thickness, adjust uh, the angle of your chamfer properly and the offset to make sure that the SCC analysis module is going to come up with the right classification. 
Um, so the system recognizes that failure type and names it automatically. Uh, it tries, uh, as you have seen in my examples, as much as possible is looking at the position of the defects, it's looking at the amplitude of the defects on both sides. So if everything is set up properly, meaning what, what the question before, uh, you have the right um, thickness, the right offset and everything, uh, it's gonna come up with some, you know, as good as possible, uh, crack, lack of penetration, uh, pause and, and everything else. At some point uh, you have seen the system is not able to tell what it is. It's just like, there is a defect. I mean, we are above the threshold, but it's still up to you, the operator, to come up with the right call. So it is really difficult to, to you know, to have the right answer to everything. Um, hey, Carlos, uh, is the role that feature to replace the operator? Uh, no, uh, that's why we call it assisted analysis analysis, and not automated analysis. Uh, because we know there is so much experience with our customers, uh, it would be really hard to uh, replace that experience. Uh, the, the goal here is for a lot of the analysis features that we have developed in the past, like the auto sizing for corrosion mapping, this is very similar to that, is trying to fill a table of indication based on standard, based on this threshold, recording threshold and evaluation threshold, and try to help and say like, okay, we think that's, that's that type of defect, but you are, the, you are the man, right? You are the operator, so you know with your experience that if that's right or not. So it is up to the operator at the end to, to, to make the right call. Um, this is, we are here to help not to replace your operator. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, you, um, you have to adjust your offset. So for example, uh, I don't know. Uh, if I go back to uh, one of the features, uh, one of the defects I had before, uh, let's see, I'm kind of opening this one again. So yes, you have to adjust the offset in analysis first. You can also edit. So let's go back to this one. We, we see here where we have a lack of fusion and let's say my offset was wrong. Uh, say it's uh, 50 millimeters. Oh, wrong one, of course. One since out of two. If this is your result here, uh, I wouldn't start the analysis uh, feature right away. I will go into my offset right here and uh, change it to, to make sure that I have you know the right uh, position minus fifty eight millimeters. Same thing with the thickness here. If if you don't if you if your thickness uh, you entered was wrong, uh, you can always edit the thickness right here to make sure that you have the proper thickness because this this is going to be used uh, for the toe cracks uh, for the classification. So you can always edit everything and then run the assistant analysis again. Okay, so that was the last question. Um, so you, here is my email address. So if you have any questions, I mean, please be free uh, to send me an email or you can comment on YouTube uh, and LinkedIn. Uh, if you have more questions, I hope you enjoy uh, that coffee break. And uh, until next time, uh, thank you very much. Bye.